वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंट्रीगिंग फीचर्स ऑफ द प्रोसेस ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी इज दैट इट हैज समथिंग इन इट फॉर एवरी वन एंड दिस इज अ रीजन वाई डेमोक्रेसी इज इनवेल्यूएबल इफ देर इज नो कन्फ्लिक्ट इन द बैकग्राउंड कन्फ्लिक्ट गिव राइज टू डिप्लोमेसी एंड ऑफ इन द ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ डिप्लोमेटिक लैंग्वेज मेक्स अ प्रोसेस अ ट्रीट टू वॉच हाई एंड वेलकम टू टी एफ आई इंग्लिश द नेशनल सोशो पोलिटिकल एनालिस ऑफ द टी एफ आई मीडिया ग्रुप आई एम योर होस्ट पी यूस एंड इफ यू हैवन सब्सक्राइब टू द टी एफ आई इंग्लिश चैनल येट प्लीज हिट द सब्सक्राइब बटन एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन टू रिसीव ऑल द रेटेस्ट अपडेट्स कमिंग बैक टू द स्टोरी इन दिस वीडियो आई एम हेयर टू एक्सप्लेन यू एस एस क्लोक एंड डैगर डिप्लोमेसी फॉर द लास्ट हंड्रेड ईयर्स अमेरिका हैज़ यूज एवरी टेक्टिक टू स्टे रेलिवेंट इन जियो पॉलिटिक्स वेल सम ऑफ दैम आर लेजिटिमेट मैथड्स मोस्ट ऑफ दैम हैव एन इन बिल्ड ट्रेचरस मैकेनिज्म इट वॉज अगेन विजिबल इन इट्स क्रिटिसिजम ऑफ इंडिया बट ड्यू टू द जय शंकर इफेक्ट इट वॉज क्वाइट मीक दिस टाइम अराउंड After failing on multiple occasions, the Biden administration has deployed new tactics to chide India. It is not doing it directly, but in a hushed tone. Samantha Power, the head of United States Agency for International Development, is currently in India. Apparently, the stated goal of her trip is to advance the India-US strategic partnership. But as with every other educated American, she also felt compulsive to give her views on democracy. This time around she was all praise for India. She appreciated India for respecting human rights, celebrating diversity, free press and free speech among other values which were mainly designed to make humans more consumptive of factory outputs. Samantha even said that other countries should follow India's trajectory. However, soon she went on to state all those qualities which are in danger in India. Putting India and the USA in the same fold, Power said yet the headwinds against democratic rule are strong the world over within the us and india there are forces who seek to sow division who seek to pit ethnicities and religions against each other who wish to bend laws abuse institutions and wield violence against those who stand in their way then she went on to cite the capital hills invasion attempt as evidence of her hypothesis but the question is why americans jumping off the capital hills is relevant to india Was Samantha trying to state that India is under a similar risk? Was she hinting towards the Red Fort incident related to fake farmers protests? But there is a larger meaning here. In the Capitol Hills incident, it is widely believed that the Trump supporters were the ones who apparently attempted what is now termed as insurrection. Now, at the global level, PM Modi and Donald Trump have been put in the same boat by the liberal media. Other nationalistic leaders like Brazil's Jair Bolsonaro, late Japanese leader Shinzo Abe, Hungary's Viktor Orban, and finally Vladimir Putin are also part of the group against which liberal media runs vicious campaigns. This is the crux of the subconscious message given by Samantha. Without saying it directly, she has said that India's values are at risk because of Modi supporters. but in the past the united states and especially the biden administration has said it without any evidence it has even accused the modi government of doing extra judicial killings quote significant human rights issues included unlawful and arbitrary killing including extra judicial killings perpetrated by police torture and cases of cruel inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment by some police and prison officials This is an excerpt from the Biden administration's 2020 report on human rights in India. In the wake of the Ukraine-Russia crisis, unsolicited lectures started to increase in both numbers and intensity. The USA wanted India to participate in its illogical, irrelevant, useless and thoughtless sanctions on Russia. But India did not reciprocate and so the USA started to try twisted methods to get India on board. It took out minority rights cards and started India to pester with. In April this year, US Commission on International Religious Freedom suggested the Biden administration to name India along with China, Pakistan, Afghanistan and 11 other countries as a country of particular concern over the status of religious freedom. The organization had already been declared an organization of particular concern in 2020. This time around, Jay Shankar's ministry effectively declared them troglodytes when it comes to having an understanding of India. 
Foreign Ministry said that the Commission lacks a basic understanding of the constitutional framework of India and its plurality. Earlier in that very month, Jay Shankar had hinted that if the US does not stop interfering in India's domestic situation, then India will feel compelled to interfere in America's domestic politics as well. Then in June, the United States used a slightly harsh tone to criticize India. This time they said that only some officials in India are engaged in hurting religious freedom. Similar sentiments were echoed in July as well. External Affairs Ministry again termed them as biased and inaccurate then and there. Samantha's comments have come in a politically correct manner and language, but it does not take away the larger meaning. Though, it is good news that India has crushed the tone. Still, any kind of such inferences should be eliminated from the diplomatic language. It will be better for the US as it needs India for balancing the world order, not the other way around. Yes, you have to be humble before begging.